Well, hey guys, summer is coming up, and in today's video, I'm gonna answer the question, how to fade a suntan? I actually get asked this quite a bit, and in this video, we're gonna go over the mechanisms behind why our skin tans, what it means, and how it fades. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I am a board-certified dermatologist. I post skincare content here on YouTube. If that is of interest to you, definitely subscribe. Hit the bell notification so you know when my videos go live, or follow me over on on TikTok or Instagram, I'm pretty consistent on those platforms as well. You've probably heard from me a number of times that re tanning represents an injury response to UV rays. UV rays come from the sun, they damage our skin in a variety of ways, and there are two main types of UV that we have to think about. There's UVB rays and there's UVA rays. UVB rays are what primarily burn the skin and those who are susceptible to burning, and UVA rays penetrate really deeply, destroy collagen. Both UVB and UVA cause mutations in our skin cells that ultimately can put us at risk for skin cancer. So they're both deadly and they both hit our skin and they both harm our skin. Interestingly enough, the majority of UV that comes from the sun and reaches our skin is actually UVA. It's actually only a small fraction that is the UVB part. Now, whether or not your skin tans or burns is related to your skin type, how much melanin pigment that you have in your skin kind of dictates whether or not you are vulnerable to a burn. Some people burn very easily with very low exposures, whereas other people rarely, if ever, burn. They primarily tan. That is what is the basis of something known as the Fitzpatrick phototype. Basically, it's just an indicator of how your skin responds to UV rays. The reason tanning is a response to skin injury is that it's basically your skin's way of trying to protect itself from the damaging effects of ultraviolet radiation by increasing the number of pigment producing cells, by increasing the amount of the pigment melanin, and by distributing that pigment to the surrounding uh, keratinocytes, which are the primary cell that make up your skin. And it does this because that melanin pigment can actually offer some protection against those UVB rays. It's not very good, however, at protecting against the UVA rays, which again, remember, is the majority of the ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun and reaches your skin. So for people who don't burn easily, their body makes more of that melanin pigment to protect them basically from burning, but it doesn't protect from those UVA wavelengths that penetrate really deep deeply into the skin. The tanning response, which I'll explain how it works in a moment, it actually requires a threshold of UV exposure. For people with pale skin, they can't reach that threshold without burning, so that's why they don't tan. But for people with deeper skin tones, they uh, definitely can easily tan. Tanning is biphasic, meaning it occurs in two phases. You have immediate tanning and delayed tanning. Immediate tanning happens upon exposure to UV almost immediately within a few hours, and it basically reflects the oxidation of melanin in the skin. Melanin that's already there in your skin gets oxidized, and you get immediate pigment darkening. And this particular type of tanning, it lasts anywhere from a day upwards to 72 hours. Thereafter, you have something called delayed tanning. That reflects the upregulation in pigment production, the increased number of melanocytes, the spreading out of pigment to neighboring cells. That is delayed tanning. Delayed tanning does not become visible until after 72 hours. As far as the appearance of tan skin, there is going to be some overlap with immediate pigment darkening also contributing to the final appearance of the tan, but it's really that delayed tanning that people uh, are left with after a few days. So when I say that tanning is an injury response, it really is, it's basically your skin doing its best to protect as much as possible the surrounding skin from subsequent UV exposure, but melanin pigment really only offers protection against that UVB fraction. It doesn't do anything for UVA. And UVA, especially long wavelength UVA, which is just a little technical detail, not only does it penetrate deeply, destroy the collagen in your skin, which forms a supportive framework, it uh, leads to mutations that can cause skin cancer. And for people who have deeper skin tones, it is what is responsible for a lot of diseases of hyperpigmentation, whether it be melasma or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. 
Most people appreciate the fact that a sunburn is a bad thing, but most people don't realize that a suntan is equally problematic because a suntan is a clue that you got just as much, if not more, damaging UV ray exposure uh, that likewise contributes to skin cancer and, and skin damage. So many people ask me in the comments, you know, I wore sunscreen, why did I tan? Does that mean my sunscreen did not work? So we're gonna talk about that. Why might you tan despite wearing sunscreen? There are a few reasons. You know, they're the usual suspects when it comes to sunscreen. Either you didn't apply enough of it, because it's actually pretty difficult to apply sunscreen the right way, two milligrams per centimeter square. That means you need a pretty thick layer and most people we know just don't apply that much. That's one possible reason. The other possible reason is, you know, maybe you didn't reapply it, maybe it was expired, um, maybe it rubbed off, again, you didn't reapply it, or maybe the sunscreen, you know, here in the States, our sunscreens are kind of hit or miss when it comes to how good they are at protecting against those long wavelengths of UVA. Sunscreens, they don't protect against all parts of UVA. That's the part that's really playing a role here in the tanning stuff. Uh, specifically, the wavelengths of UVA between 370 to 400 nanometers. Those are called the, you know, the, that's long UVA one. It penetrates really deeply. M most sunscreens are not protecting you against those wavelengths. They do contribute to the tanning response. And so that is, you know, another reason. Sunscreen, it, it protects you, uh, but it's not 100%. And so for people who have a deeper skin tone, they are going to be able to tan through sunscreen, even wearing it at a you know sufficient density um, because it's not a hundred it's not a hundred percent block so does that mean my skin is constantly being injured low levels of uv exposure they they are cumulative with time in terms of the injury tanning is just like an indication of your body trying to protect against that so for example if you go out and you're out for a few minutes and you get immediate pigment darkening from uva exposure it's a clue that you were exposed to uv it's not possible really to shield yourself 24 7 round the clock from all UV rays and that is not my message it's really to minimize exposure to harmful UV rays as, as much as possible but it's not possible nor should you be concerned with you know shielding yourself hundred percent I don't advocate for staying indoors all the time and never going out and avoiding the Sun the Sun protective messaging is to wear sunscreen reapply it wear sun protective clothing, like hats, long sleeves, long pants, sunglasses, seek out shade, especially during uh, the, hour, the midday hours when UV rays are most intense. The, the best thing to do, I would say, to, to minimize that immediate pigment darkening is gonna be, you know, rely on sun protective clothing and don't stay out, you know, don't spend a lot of time out during, during peak exposure times. How long, so when you're thinking about trying to fade a tan, a, a, a tan should last anywhere from seven to 10 days, then it starts to fade naturally on its own. But if you keep going out, uh, even for little bits of time, you can have more of the immediate pigment darkening kind of coming up in the background and playing a role in, in that the appearance of tan skin. In order to fade a tan, you really need to protect your skin from the sun by using additional means besides a sunscreen, whether that be sun protective clothing or avoiding peak sun exposure hours. What about skincare products? Are there any skincare products that will help with fading a tan? You know, online you will come across a lot of home remedies like lemon juice, baking soda, potato. I suggest avoiding these at home remedies. They can be very irritating depending on how much sun exposure you got to lead to your tan your skin can be very a lot more vulnerable to irritation and skin problems because those uva rays they actually suppress the uh, immune system and they delay healing so the last thing you want to do is to cause a lot of irritation in the skin that ultimately will be at risk for healing with hyperpigmentation uh, so i suggest avoiding a lot of those home remedies if you're someone who uses a uh, retinoid or an over-the-counter retinol, that may help in accelerating the rate of clearance of that tan and getting you back to your baseline skin tone. But I, uh, I wouldn't necessarily go out and try and do a bunch of exfoliants to increase skin cell turnover. 
and just give it some some time and it will should fade on its own the, the key is to be protecting your skin from the sun and using certain exfoliants namely alpha hydroxy acids actually can increase your skin's sensitivity to the sun making you more likely to tan further so i don't suggest doing things like that and i really suggest for those who have a deeper skin tone especially to be very conservative and not be tempted to do a lot of exfoliating because it can just leave your skin even more hyperpigmentation prone. You see, people who have a paler skin type, they don't ever, they're not able to get to the threshold of UV exposure that their skin requires to tan. They'll burn before they ever get there. It's just not possible for them. Whereas people who have more melanin, that melanin oxidizes first, which leads to immediate pigment darkening, and then their body, uh, you know, they, their cells make more of that melanin. Their uh, melanin-producing cells, the melanocytes, increase in number, send out little fingers to the surrounding skin, and shoot out more of that melanin pigment in an effort to protect the DNA in your skin from UVB, not from UVA. The majority of the UV that reaches your skin, regardless of your skin type, is at UVA. And a tan does not protect you from that. Um, and a tan actually leaves your skin a lot more vulnerable. One of the other responses in the skin that occurs along with tanning is the skin thickens in a sense and becomes very leathery. And the barrier is not as strong and hardy, it makes you more prone to infections and things like that. The immunosuppressive effects of UV exposure at that level. It's what makes people who have, uh, who are prone to cold sores more likely to get an outbreak. It's why melasma flares, it's why you can get hyperpigmentation, all sorts of things. All right, you guys, I hope this video was helpful. You know, tanning, it is a difficult concept to explain. It's not uh, as straightforward as you might think. It, as you can, as you, you hopefully learn in this video, it's biphasic. It's wavelength dependent, meaning it's re largely related to UVA, especially for immediate pigment darkening. And then to a certain extent, UVB comes in as well. So in order to get a, de you know, a, a delayed tan, it does require a pretty heavy dose of UV exposure. And you shouldn't be seeking out a tan from the sun by sunbathing. Can cause a lot of damage to your skin. I didn't mention tanning beds, but whatever you do, don't go in a tanning bed. See, the way tanning beds work is they don't include any of the burning rays. So they just include a mega dose of the UVA rays, which cause cancer. Going in a tanning bed just once really, really increases your risk for a variety of skin cancers, including the deadly melanoma, because it's giving you such a whopping dose of that UVA radiation, stronger than what you would get from the sun. That's why it causes tanning. There's no UVB in a tanning bed. That's why you don't usually burn. You can burn from UVA, as a side note. If exposed to a strong enough dose of UVA, you actually can get a UVA sunburn, but it's more, in in real natural sun exposure, it's, it's due to UVB is what burns the skin. But in a tanning bed, because the UVA dose is so strong, it actually can end up burning your skin. But in most cases, it doesn't. It leads to tanning, which is why you're going in there. But the dose is so high of UVA that it really, really sets the stage for skin cancer. I mean, it just kind of wipes everything out as far as your immune system, does a lot of damage inflammation, destroys your collagen. Yeah, no good. All right, y'all, I hope this video was helpful. Like I said, explaining the tanning response is challenging. Explaining the nature of fading tanning is challenging. There are a lot of products on the market and a lot of DIYs on Pinterest that try and get people to you know, buy something or do something to exfoliate or bleach the skin. Don't do any of that because if anything, your skin is a lot more vulnerable to inflammation and hyperpigmentation when you are, when you have gotten the UV doses needed to tan the skin. So I would suggest staying away from those. On the end slate, I'm gonna put yesterday's video all about sunless tanners. So definitely check that one out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.